Hey, what's up, guys? This is Gavin Shaw of the Locked On Knicks podcast, and today I'm happy to tell you we are once again joined by CP, the franchise, that's right, the man himself, the legend behind Knicks Fan TV, to discuss some hypothetical Julius Randle trades, including one for a certain star from the Detroit Pistons and another for the player the Knicks should have wanted all along last summer. All that and more next on Locked On Knicks. You are Locked On Knicks, your daily New York Knicks podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Knicks, your daily New York Knicks podcast. I want to thank you for making Locked On Knicks your first listen today. And every day we are now available on all platforms, including, and you know this, you're seeing my face right now, on YouTube. Uh, please, if you haven't already, throw us a subscription on there, like, comment, the works. You guys know the deal. And today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. We wanted to remind you to check out prizepicks.com and use promo code MBA or go to your app store and download the app today. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. And as promised, we are once again joined by CP, the franchise. Uh, if you don't know about Knicks Fan TV, I don't know what to tell you. They, they are the biggest names uh, in, in the Knicks media, certainly on YouTube. Uh, and CP is amazing at what he does. And he joins us today to go through some mock Julius Randle trades that Alex and I cooked up. So without further ado, let's get into it with CP. So CP, when you brought up New Orleans, I hadn't initially planned on showing a Zion trade, but I just cooked one up while you guys were talking there. Oh boy. So, All right. Here we go. I'm going to show this on screen. Yeah. I'm going to show this on screen for YouTube and then I'll, yeah. I'll read it off for the podcast here. But so we got, how would you guys feel? The Knicks pull a deal. They end up with Zion Williamson and Jonas Valanciunas. They send out Julius Randle, Quentin Grimes, Emmanuel Quickly, uh, theirs and Dallas's first rounders for 2023, their own first rounder for 2025, and Detroit's second rounder for next year. So probably three top 35-ish picks for next year, uh, plus the 2025 pick as well. And you wind up with not just Zion, but also uh, Jonas Valanciunas, who's who's pretty good in his in his own right. Has had, I think, a really really great season this year. Gabby, you want to take this one first? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. I feel like that's gonna be a little too much for CP. Yeah, this is tough to be man. Yeah. Quickly's my guy, man. Yeah, oh yeah. man, yeah. I, I feel that way about Quickly and Grimes. Oh, yeah, that would be, from a sentimental perspective, extremely painful. Um, yeah. I think I think you have to do it. I think. I, again, like that, like you're not going to get a perfect swing, right? At a yeah. star, like if that guy's getting dealt, there, there's a reason he's getting dealt. Like what Zion, we, we just, we had um Jake Madison on who hosts Locked on mm -hmm. Pelicans. And like, he made the point, like Zion averaged 27 points and like 68% shooting, like not really knowing what he's doing yet and not having like his mid range game fully played out, not having his three point game fully played out. I think he's only going to get better as a defender. Like, the, the ceiling for that guy, like, obviously, like, you can't – the injuries are the elephant in the in, yeah. in the room. And, like, no yeah. one yeah. no one can definitively predict that. I personally – I don't think he's Greg Oden. I think he's going to figure it out to some extent or another, but there, there's no guarantee of that. But you're not going to get that perfect swing. You got to take the ones you get. And Zion just has that ceiling that, especially if, if I get to trade for him while keeping R.J. Barrett, like, you almost, you almost can't question as painful as it is to send those guys out. Yeah, like I said, man, it would be tough to lose the, the shooting uh, of Quick and Grimes, the defense of Quickly and Grimes, you know, the draft capital. But as you said, I, I think for that for that type of player, if, if you can promise me that, you know, he can stay injured, I mean, stay stay healthy, <laughs> I think it's something that, you, that you'd have to look at. Obviously, Valanciunas yeah. is going to get you boards. Uh, in that type of deal, you, you look to maybe sign and trade Mitch somewhere else and get a point guard or get some more shooting wing depth. I think I would have to do it, man. But damn, man, I quickly been playing so well. It's you're, you're, such, you're such torturing hard. us, Alex. You're torturing us. I, man, I think that was the whole idea. Too. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, uh, I, I think that that's a realistic type of package, though, that people would have to expect if you're trying to get Zion. You got to yeah. pay to play. You know, you, you got to pay to play. I think, yeah, I think it would all come down to like, there would be two factors to play here, right? That could potentially help the Knicks along in this deal. One would be, Obviously, without even tampering, you have his two, you know, college teammates on your team. RJ Barrett and Zion are like best friends, like just point blank period. Like mm -hmm. I've always gotten the impression based off how they interact with one another and 
how they speak of one another, that they're basically like best buds ever since Duke. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have the inside track on knowing what his medicals are like. Like, RJ Barrett can text Zion tomorrow and be like, hey, how much have you been like playing this injury up? <laughs> yeah. You know? what, 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 <laughs> he, he texts back, nah, dude, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, I don't mean, tell might, anyone, LOL. Yeah, don't tell anyone, but I'm toast. Okay, well, we're not going to trade for you then, but mm-hmm. thanks for letting us know. You know what I mean? Bro, you said you wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So assuming that they, that they have that sort of inside track and can get, you know, probably a better read on Zion's medicals than they could even get if they demanded them from the Pelicans. Yeah. Um, you know, that would work in their favor. The other thing is if Zion pulls the Porzingis maneuver, but more effectively, then he might literally be able to say, I only will go to the Knicks or else I'm signing the qualifying offer. I think the thing with the Porzingis thing was, because like, if you remember, Porzingis gave his list of teams to the Knicks and yeah. it actually didn't include the Mavericks right. initially. Um, it included the, I think it was like the Spurs, the Heat, the Nets, and there was like one other team on there. I forget Toronto, what the other maybe? team was. Like, yeah. Maybe Weird. Boston or Toronto or something. Yeah. yeah. I, I forget, but it was like four teams, right? And then mm-hmm. it comes out minutes later that they traded him to the Mavs, which was not on this list that he apparently gave them. Mm-hmm. I think Zion would have a little more, a little more leverage in that situation, right? Because Porzingis had threatened, I will sign the qualifying offer, but Porzingis was not as good as Zion, first off. I mean, that's just facts. And, you know, despite the fact that Porzingis' ACL injury was more, I, I guess, easy to gauge than Zion's sort of nebulous, like, foot injury that he's had this year, mm-hmm. um, I still think that there's more of a case to be made that, like, I feel like Porzingis carried a little more of an injury risk. But on top of it, Zion also, I mean, I don't think this could be understated, before he even set foot on an NBA floor, he already had himself locked up to basically like a hundred million dollars of like endorsements over like yeah. his first like five years. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. I think just his Jordan brand contract alone pays him like ten million dollars a year mm-hmm. or something along those lines. So if anyone would ever have the leverage to say, I will sign a qualifying offer and become an unrestricted free agent next year. I don't care about the money. I just want to go where I want to go and mm-hmm. where I want to go is the Knicks to so trade me there or don't, but that's where I'm going to end up. Um, he would be that guy. I yeah. think. Yeah. So I, that's part of it too. And that could lead to the Knicks not having to pay as much or the, you know, the Pelicans could choose to call the bluff. And then we reach this sort of impasse where it almost turns into like a mellow trade situation where it's like, we know this is where he wants to go. We know that he said this is the only place he wants to go. Mm. Uh, well, with Melo, there was the Nets part to it too. But like, you know, do do we as the Pelicans want to cave or do we want to call his bluff or whatever? And so as the Knicks, you'd probably find some happy middle ground. But I think where I stand on that deal, and I mean, I literally just cooked that up. I just like pulled that out of my butt. <laughs> but like, I think that's basically it, you know, like, I think that Griffin would look at Randall as like, okay, I could sell this as a salvageable guy. He already is. He, he already has been here and he played probably his second best played season well. of his career here. Played well, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, that earned him the chance with the Knicks to begin with. Once a uh, Pelican, go- always a Pelican. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, pap. Oh, that sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a medical procedure. Um, <laughs> but uh, well, one, one that Zion may need at some point. That's right. <laughs> <And OPAP. laughs> but then, you know, yeah, I think that two young players plus that fistful of draft picks, I think is what you'd have to do because yeah. Zion already in his second season without a three point shot yet was already a better score than Randall's ever been in his entire career. It's, Not close. Close. Yeah. it's crazy to say that, but I mean, he averaged like 27, 28 points per game his second year in the league without a three point shot. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if you're able to do that, that's basically what like Giannis does. You know what I mean? Like when Giannis's three point shot isn't falling for him, he was able to average 30 points just on sheer force getting yeah. to the rim and everything. I think that's a deal you got to go for as well. So begrudgingly, I would not want to see uh, like quickly and Grimes go, but the reality is they do get another draft pick this year to try to mm-hmm. you know build the roster out a little bit. Uh, they do still have Obi and Cam and Deuce, and you know they could potentially bring over Jokabitis then yeah. if the, if that playing time opens up. I think I'd be willing to take that plunge, and you know as long as again you get a clean bill of health from Zion himself, I think I'd be willing to do that as well. All right, guys, let's take our first break with CP. Come back and go over a couple more Julius Randle fake trades. Uh, But first, 
I want to remind you, NBA fans, are you looking for a daily fantasy option for the association? Then you need to try the award-winning app, Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. I love it, and we know you will too. You All you have to do is pick two to five players and over under in their projections. You can win up to 10 times on any entry. It's just you versus the projected numbers. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Prize Picks is safe and offers fast withdrawals. Use the award winning app on both the App Store and Google Play. Prize Picks offers any prop you can think of from points scored to rebounds and even steals. Prize Picks also allows mixed sport entries. So, you know, my Rangers are charging right now. Uh, maybe you could uh, do an over under of Shesterkin saves versus OB top and points. That would be pretty competitive given how those two are playing of late. And Prize Picks doesn't just offer NBA. They have options on college basketball, college football, NFL, MLB, soccer, MMA, and more. So for a limited time, Prize Picks has an exclusive no-brainer of an offer for all of our users. Users get fifty dollars for free. That's right, for free. If a player in your first Prize Picks entry scores a single point, but you must use code MBA. That's right. This is an exclusive offer available to Locked On fans. Sign up today and use code MBA. Fifty dollars for free if a player in your first Prize Pick entry scores a single. point. Point. And today's episode is also brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your sports betting needs and sports info. You can find all the latest sports developments, including this week's Masters Championships odds, podcast, and reviews for all the different leagues this season. I personally don't know that much about the Masters, but as you guys know, I do follow the NBA a little bit. Uh, the odds, or, or rather the, the line that I'm looking at this week, um, tonight the Brooklyn Nets take on the Houston Rockets. The Nets on Bet Online are 17 and a half point favorites. I would throw some money down on the Houston Rockets. Uh, they can certainly score and the Nets certainly allow you to score. So I'm pretty sure the Nets will win, but I think the Rockets will score with them, make it a little closer than it appears down the stretch and get within those 17 and a half points. But bet online is your continued source for all the sports wagering information you need, including live betting, esports, and scores. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. Um, moving to our next trade though. This was one that I actually cooked up ahead of time. So I'm going to get your guys' reaction to this one. We'll pull this up on YouTube, and I'll spell it out here. Uh, oh, wrong one. So this next one, uh, so Russell Westbrook's name has come up. Jeremy Grant's name has also come up in trade discussions recently mm -hmm. or, you know, dating back to, like, the trade deadline even. Uh, so this deal, Julius Randle goes to the Lakers. Jeremy Grant comes back to the Knicks. And in exchange for basically being the dumping ground for Russell Westbrook, uh, the Pistons get a first round pick from the Lakers and they get the Dallas 2023 pick from the Knicks, which I think is a pretty fair way to say here, take this extra $20 million and yeah. use your copious cap space for that. Uh, CP, how do you feel about that deal? Uh, from a Knicks standpoint, I I would I would probably do that one. You know, I I always like Grant's game. Now you're not going to get the, the rebounding and the the assist numbers that Randall gave you, so you're going to take a little bit of a step back. But you are going to get the positional versatility that I talked about. You know, Grant's a guy who can guard threes, he can guard fours. You're with the right coach, maybe even have him at the five. You have Obi at the four. You know, you can have those guys coexisting a little bit, and he, he's a, he's a smarter player. But uh, you know, for the Lakers, I think that would be interesting because. They've been playing LeBron at the five. You still have AD who ideally should be at the five. So it would be interesting to see how they would factor, you know, Randall into the equation. And then for the Pistons, are you are, are we looking at, you know, just, just a salary dump for the Pistons to, to you know, take that money obviously into the next offseason and, and build from there with the additional draft picks? Because I, I would find that a little bit difficult from the Pistons standpoint of, of the three teams. Yeah, they can't they can't play Russ, right? Like he he has to be like released or bought I, yeah, out. Like yeah, I think yeah. it would just be a buyout situation. Yeah, yeah. 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 right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he would want to be there anyways, obviously. Yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, I like I like Jeremy Grant, right? Like thirty five percent three point shooter. Like the last couple of years, I mean, he's thirty nine percent in Denver on, mm -hmm. on a lot lower volume, playing off of Jokic. Um, I think he's someone who would fit in a little bit more seamlessly than Randall, just because like he had that long tenure as a role guy. Even though he's made it very clear that he had similar aspirations to Julius. Like he's like, I want to be an all-star. Like I want, right. I want to be in those conversations. So maybe you run into some of the same issues. I can't say I know enough about him to really gauge that, but I think his game is maybe a slightly cleaner fit. And I think the biggest thing is like, he just, he doesn't have the baggage that Randall has specifically with the Knicks. So you'd be able to bring him in and say like, Hey, let's give this like an honest chance and fold him in. And if it doesn't work out and you're the Knicks, like, all right, you gave up a first round pick, you got off Randall, you can then go ahead and move Grant for something else, like a, a young piece or picks mm -hmm. or like, like that. It, it, he's kind of like a very easily transitioned um, player. So I, I think, I think it's a good option. 
I also think one thing that I like about this deal, other than uh, like, I love Jeremy Grant too. I don't know if I've made that super abundant on this podcast, but yeah. like, I love Jeremy Grant. Like I really like his game. I think he's a super versatile defender. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I think he always gives it to you on that end of the floor. Absolutely. I think that he's, he's definitely gotten better as a creator, you mm -hmm. know? And I think that he has, I mean, look, he's shown that he could be a 20 point per game scorer. In hey, he, had, he had a couple 40. Uh, he had a 40 and a, and a 30, I think, before he went out. So, yeah. So, I mean, he's very capable as a scorer now. I think he's grown a lot. Unlike Randall, you know, like his shooting numbers, he didn't hit the high highs that Randall hit last year as far as like three point shooting, but he has had consistency this year, which is more than we can say for Randall uh, as far as, you know, keeping pace with where he was last year. He's actually shooting, I think, slightly better from three this year yeah. by like, He's got thirty five percent, thirty five percent yeah. through this year. Yeah, so he's like shooting roughly the same as what he did last year on good volume. Still, I think he's shooting higher volume this year as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, to me, I'm like that's a consistent player, and he'll give you that defensive versatility that you like, and you know can stretch the floor. He has a little bit of rim protection to him right. as well, which is something that Randall doesn't give you. So that's like a give and take, you mm -hmm. know, with the rebounding and stuff. But you get some rim protection. If you keep a guy like Mitch, who is doing tons of work on the rebounds, then maybe that becomes more palatable, you know, to take a little yeah. hit in the rebounding there and just be like, Mitch, instead of just boxing guys out, you know, go after every rebound. They're all yours now. There's mm -hmm. no more Randall to get rebounds anymore. Plus the fact that you have RJ Barrett, who's a good rebounding guard. You're still holding on to quickly in this scenario, who's been very good with rebounding lately. Grimes as well. Grimes. Grimes. Mm -hmm. So you have plenty of guys that are, are good rebounding guards on the team as well to help sort of offset that. So I like it for that from just an asset management perspective, Gavin, you just sort of like made me think of something that I hadn't even thought of when I thought of this trade previously, which is that not only are you getting, you know, a, a guy who has a very easily, you know, aggregate aggregatable salary um, in grant with it making like $20 million, but he's an expiring contract, which right. can, work two ways for you because beauty can kind of be in the eye of the beholder there where you could trade him to some team that might say, Hey, we want to lock this guy up long-term. You know, if it doesn't work out with the Knicks, of course, maybe the Knicks are the team that ends up wanting to lock him up. Mm -hmm. But you know, if that happens and you could trade him to some team that says, okay, we'll use his bird rights and, you know, sign him to a good deal this off season and keep him as a long-term piece. Or if some team wants an expiring contract, but wants like a, a rental type player, you can send him to that sort of situation too. So I think it's a much more versatile contract than Julius starting the first of his four year extension that we're already, there's already buyers for more son. Yeah. Um, so I think that he offers a lot, you know, both on the court and off the court as far as versatility goes. So I, I like that deal quite a bit. Um, if the Knicks could do that, I think that there's, there's a chance that, you know, just by swapping essentially grant for Randall, and, you know, it stinks having to pay the uh, the Dallas pick to do so. But just getting a guy who's going to give 100% every night in that spot yeah. Yeah. could make a huge difference no and with roughly the same, you know, production. So, yeah, I like him quite a bit. Um, I'll introduce our next trade here, though. Mm -hmm. We'll just keep rolling along. So this next one, this is much more of a uh, – this is sort of a sell low. This would feel really yeah. icky if you looked at it like last year. But Oof. call yeah, up the Indian Pacers. Yeah. Can't do no, it. no longer have Domus Sabonis, you know, so maybe you're looking to reload as they do. Uh, you get Buddy Heald back, who has two years left on his deal at about $20 million. Uh, uh, and then you get, yeah, I know, it's, it's enough to make you not yeah. happy. You also, you also got to move Evan Fournier if you, if you do yeah. this, right? Yeah. Well, no. Well, so here, uh, hear me out on my part, and then yeah, I'll just throw it to you guys to react because I, I have a methodology of why I thought this might work, but mm – -hmm. Um, so you get, you know, you get Buddy Heald back. Buddy Heald is presumably not good enough that you can justify just sort of sitting him and having him be basically situational, even for that price tag. But you also get back, uh, in addition to Heald, uh, the Houston's 2022 uh, second round pick, you know, this year, which will be high in the second round, very high in the second round, which I figure would be sort of a selling point to the Knicks and their propensity for drafting good players. Um, in, you know, that, that late first, early second range and the Spurs second round pick next year. So two second round picks of Buddy Heald. This is sort of the definition of addition by subtraction, right? Yeah. Um, 
Gavin, I'll throw it to you first on this one, then throw it to CP. But like, because you had, you had sort of a, you had the most visceral reaction. To that <laughs> so I want to hear what you think here. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm an, I'm an OU fan, so I love lo- love Buddy. Uh, all like all world shooter, right? Like probably one of the five to ten best shooters on planet Earth, no debate. But the Knicks already have one of those guys in Evan Fournier who comes with like some of the same issues, but honestly, like Buddy is worse in all the areas that we hate about Fournier. Like the defense, like you think Evan Fournier is not great on defense. Wait till you watch Buddy Heald. It's, it's, it's a whole new paradigm of, of how awful it can be. Um, and then offensively, like I just, maybe, maybe he's added to his game a little bit, but from what I've seen of him, like doesn't necessarily have like the dri- off the dribble game that Fournier has to the same extent, like the floater game or like the passing that Fournier is flash. And I just, I don't think it's palatable to have those two guys on the roster together. Like maybe you're playing each of them, 24 minutes a game, but you're also trying to fit Grimes in there. You're trying to fit whoever you take at, at 12 in there. Like, I think it's just, I think it's too clogged up. Like if there's another Fournier trade where you're getting back positive assets and you're just essentially trying sliding healed into Fournier's slot like that, I get because you always need shooting and buddy healed again, a, about as good as anyone in the world that's shooting the basketball. But there's just, there, there's not much else there. I'm out. I'm out totally, man. I, I hate this deal. Uh, I'm, for all the reasons Gavin said, you know, you're getting better production from 40. And I think Quentin Grimes could, could be that guy. And you're getting a two-way player, you know. So I'm definitely out. I, I don't like the two second-round picks, even though they'd be high seconds. And I don't see, you know, did you say, did were both of those for this coming draft? Or one was 2022 and one was 2023? Correct. Yeah. Houston's this year, San Antonio's next year. Yeah, I, it's not, not enough for me, man. Not yeah. this, this isn't even this isn't even mellow for you know Ennis Cantor and and Doug McDermott man this is way worse way yeah worse. let me let me just ask real quick so yeah. this this could be like a one word answer from both of you guys mm-hmm. on a scale of one to ten how much is your reservation about this trade fear that Tibbs would basically bury Grimes or you know one of the other young players in favor of pay, playing healed like twenty five minutes a game. I just got like a pain in my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd say that's, that's, that's part of it. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe I'd say it's about an eight. Yeah. yeah. An eight. Yeah. Yeah. An eight. yeah. I don't, we, we got to move on. I, I don't like this. At all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm in about an eight or nine as well. So yeah. yeah, it's not, not great. Not great at all. All right, guys, we're going to come back one final time with CP. We get into one of my trades, uh, talking about a potential deal with the Chicago Bulls. Uh, that can net the Knicks, the point guard of their dreams. But first, I wanted to remind you this episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With an ever-increasing number of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless receiving the intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts in their computer? Choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. So save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why well, choose to spend 30%, 50%, even 100% more for the same parts from your chain store or car dealership? Rock Auto is a family business serving do it yourselfers like yourself. For over 20 years, Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer. They have everything you need, including brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Go explore their easy to use website today to find the solutions to your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Box? So they know we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Rockauto.com. All right, let's move to our next one here. So we're going to pull up our next trade. Mm-hmm. Next one is the Wizards, right? Mm-hmm. Another team. Presumably, Bradley Beal has said that he's like, you know, on board with staying there. It's always like they're the biggest will they won't they since like Ross and Rachel, you know, will they trade uh, Bradley Beal or won't they? Is he going to stay? Is he not? But it seems like, again, he's committed to staying there. Uh, So let's say that they're looking to add, you know, another guy to him and Porzingis Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, try to make a weird run in the East next year. Uh, Maybe Randall will interest them because they're a team that clearly is not much of a free agent destination and they seem to have to do most of their damage through trades. Uh, So let's say that they go after Julius Randall. Here's a deal that works under under like the salary cap and everything. Contavious Caldwell Pope coming back to the Knicks on an expiring contract, $14 million. Mm -hmm. You get Denny Avdia in his third year. So you get his third and fourth years on his rookie contract. He's obviously had his struggles. I mm-hmm. I loved him a lot coming into the draft. I don't yeah. love him as much now, uh, but still maybe a reclamation project. I threw Anthony Gill in there. I'll be honest. I don't even know who he is, but <laughs> I needed a little bit extra salary. Uh, and then a, a future second round pick. I just threw a, a 2026 one in there. But basically you're getting a recent first round pick, you know, a recent lottery pick. You get Contavious Caldwell-Pope, who's a useful player. 
and a second round pick for the future. How do we feel about that one for Julius Randle? CP, I'll throw that to you first. Yeah, I don't like that one, man. <laughs> I don't like that one. I, if KCP's playing, I, if KCP might start. He might be an ex Alec Burks if you bring him in. Could here. be. Oh, um, God. KCP, a point guard. Oh, yeah, no. You're bringing in KCP. <laughs> that's, that's your next point guard in, in this tip system. <laughs> Uh, hey, KCP, he, he hasn't been that terrible this year, man. Uh, but, you know, with that DAA, you get a bit of a reclamation project. Uh, hasn't really lived up to the draft hype. You know, another wing coming in here, adding to the glut of wings that we have, and that, you know, who won't necessarily establish himself as a cut above the rest. You kind of just have guys that you're trying to figure it out, whether it's Cam Reddish or or Avdia. Um I think for the Wizards, it'd be interesting, you know, you know, having a Beal, Randall, Porzingis kind of trio. I mean, Washington, what are they really going to do to put a team around Bradley Beal? You know he's taking the money anyway. You know he's taking the money. Despite what he says, oh, it's business and, you know, I got to take care of it. He's going to take the money. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, I think that trio would be interesting for the Knicks. I think that's too low, man. Uh, I yeah. think it's too low. I, I love the comedy of Randall and Porzingis ending up on the same team. It might, <laughs> might, be, worth, it might be worth it for that alone. Like, just, just like there's just one team in the NBA, like no Knicks fan will ever watch, or maybe they will watch out of like morbid fascination. But right, I right. just think it'd be an awkward fit, and they would hate each other. And you just get all these comments in the media, like, like hey, Kristaps thought Luca was bad, but he really doesn't like Julius. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So that for that reason alone, maybe. But uh, I, I think I lean the same direction. CP, we're like, I like the players, right? Like, I think Abdi is good. Like, he's already, I think. a pretty good defender like I'm always impressed whenever I watch them at least on that end um only 31 percent from three this year so that and that was always the question with him coming out of the draft right was he going to be a plus shooter if he gets that down like I think like if not a starter like he's he's a good bench player in the NBA KCP rock solid but again you have Burks you have Fournier like you maybe better versions of him or at least equivalent versions of him on this team already and and to CP's point to all of our points we want to see Quentin Grimes I I, if Quentin Grimes is playing 35 minutes a game next year I'm I'm saying yeah. that's great. I'm, I'm fine with that. Sure. So I just, I just don't think I, I want to get like, whether it's a pick or a player, I want to get one thing back that is just evidently useful for the Knicks next season. I can't say that trait does that for you. I agree with both you guys. I'm not super in love with it either. Another scenario I could potentially see this deal working in would be if you could turn this into a three teamer and there was some team out there that had a, um, you know, a, a disgruntled star, but one that, you know, they're, they're trying to add that like young piece or something and some picks or whatever, then the Knicks can say, all right, we'll reroute Avdia, you know, to some other team and start up this star trade. We'll make this into a three team or that way we can trade Julius for the extra assets to finish this deal up um, for, you know, I don't know. Let's say that like Donovan Mitchell shocks the world and does say like, I want out this off season. Maybe the jazz then say, all right, well, we still think we could make some noise even without him. So we'll take KCP. We'll take the reclamation project in FDA and, you know, plus whatever other assets the Knicks would send out to go with that to match up to a Donovan Mitchell or something. I think I'll be much more in much more with Julius being worth that much if that was what the assets were used for. But mm-hmm. in terms of like, I agree with UCP. I think, I think it's a good point. Like, Getting Avdia, you already have like Cam Reddish is sort of already your guy like that on the roster, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I'd like to see some time put into him because his clock is sooner. Right, you know, like right. you have to figure things out with Cam next year, and then figure out if you want to pay him or not. Mm-hmm. So I, I think I'd rather dedicate the time to him. Uh, I'll throw it to our next deal. We got two more real mm-hmm. quick to finish off the show here. So our first, uh, first of the final two here. This is another one probably going to make you queasy. Uh, <laughs> Basically, just clearing the books. This is more yeah. or less just like a salary clear deal, right? Yeah. Um, Julius Randle to the Blazers. If they're, again, you know, another trying to keep someone happy situation, Randle to the Blazers for Eric Bledsoe. It matches with salary, like good enough under the under the rules. Bledsoe's on a $19 million expiring. Presumably, you would work out some sort of buyout with him and probably save yourself about $10 million in cap. Um, and then two second round picks. It's just, I just grabbed two random ones, but basically just a dump, you know, basically this one is like get off Julius's extension and clear up some salary and give yourself more flexibility going forward to build around RJ Barrett. So how do we feel about that one? CP, I'll throw it to you first again. I mean, as a last resort, you know, 
I, I guess sure, man. But as, as your first option, if that's Leon's first option, that that's a tough one. I, I don't think he'll be uh, next president for for that much longer. You know, for the Blazers, um, they, they've been adamant that they want to continue. This is not a rebuild for them. They want to continue to build a competitive team with Damian Lillard. I have no idea how they're going to do that. We've heard Grant's name being rumored, but if Grant doesn't work out, I think Randall could possibly be a, a, an option for them. You know, you have Simons, you have Dame there. You have Nurkic. I think a, a power forward of, of Randall's caliber um, could be, you know, something that the that the Blazers target. But for the Knicks, if if it's you know a dump, then obviously uh, you use that salary cap wisely and you continue to build a team with with RJ as your focal point. Yeah, I almost wonder if you could do something around like quickly and Randall for Simons, like because Simons was she's just been a monster like I, I don't to be I don't think Portland's going to trade him because I, yeah, I think he's I far see. and away their best asset yeah so and I think even if you're the Knicks you maybe have to throw in more stuff in there and then on the Knicks end it starts looking kind of bad so mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like a hypocrite because that's essentially what I've been advocating the whole first half of the show is like yeah just get off and whatever you need so I'd say I mean to CP's point you can't find anything else yeah maybe I mean d- depending on how the shapes up over the offseason if Randall insists like hey yeah this just isn't going to work Maybe that's what you got to do. And and maybe it's just, it's, it's a reset and you, you clear him. You don't have to give up an asset to get off him. And that sound that's sick that like, that's like where we're at, but like, maybe, maybe that's the landscape for him. Um, so worst case scenario, sure. Um, I would do a lot of canvassing and a lot, a lot of calls before I got there. Yeah. Yeah. I would keep that as like my bailout too. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's a, that's like the first call you make. That's one of the first calls you make. And then you say, all right, hold on for a few days <laughs> yeah, let me get back to you, to you. <laughs> uh just keep this you know yeah. give me give me like a soft yes so that i can come back to it if i need to right uh but let me let me check around the league real quick and don't call anybody and tell them that we talked about this you know <laughs> um but yeah i'm with you guys it it feels dirty compared you know with where we were with him coming into this season and everything but that's basically like your zero sum trade you know where you just say Hey, we're getting off him for free, more or less. You get a couple second round picks to potentially toss into a trade or something down the line, but Mm -hmm. that's basically it. Uh, All right, final trade. Gavin, this one was one that you cooked up, so I'm going to let you introduce this, but I'll, I'll pull it up for the people on YouTube, and then you can you can detail this here. Yeah, so this one this one's interesting, I think, from Chicago's perspective, because I think Lonzo is such a better fit for them than Julius is. Like a, a guy who all he wants to do is move the ball around, uh, lead guys out in transition play really good defense, like harass people with Alex Caruso. Like when, when the Bulls were really working this year, Lonzo Ball was was a really significant part of it. But the injuries just have to be like – like I would feel a little queasy as a Bulls fan about them. Like they just have to be a pretty significant concern, right? Is it's like two of the last three years or three of the last four now, like he's had really, really significant issues and missed a huge chunk of the year. Um, that would that would frustrate me. And I think Randall for them is just like a talent play. They're saying like, all right, we just have just overwhelming offense between – Levine, DeRozan, Vucevic, and Randall. I mean, the fly in the ointment again is like if Julius isn't happy, like taking backseat to RJ, he's not going to be thrilled being the third or fourth option in Chicago. So I don't know if this is super realistic. I've just long wanted Lonzo Ball in the Knicks. And like, even if the Knicks have to like throw in a first round pick to make that happen, like I would, I think about it. And like, there's a world where the Bulls are just saying like, hey, like it's just going to be like extremely difficult to guard that on a night to night basis, having those four guys on the courts. And, and again, they're getting um, Miles McBride sort of for their trouble. So uh, CP, what, what, what do you think of yeah. that one? Well, Lonzo and Obi would be box office in transition. Man. Oh yeah. You get Lonzo and Obi in the open court, forget about it. And then you have uh, a nice outlet there for RJ Barrett, somebody to play off of RJ. I, I think Lonzo uh, would be excellent here. I think fans are still kicking themselves for, for the Knicks not being able to, uh, to be in that that Lonzo chase, you know, it seems like the Bulls had the inside track the whole time. But, you know, given where we are and how the season ended and, and our need at the point, uh, I think Lonzo would, uh, would would certainly lift this team just like he did with, with the Bulls, you know. And, and as you said, Gav, I think it would be a tricky fit uh, with Randall. And, and there's only one ball. So, you know, between Randall, Levine, DeRozan, uh, they, they would have to be – and and, uh, and Vucevic – have to be a lot of sacrifice in there to, to make this thing work. But certainly for the Knicks, I think I would certainly do that. You know, I think Lonzo would help us a great deal. I think I would do it as well. But yeah, I mean, whew, if Julius is unhappy with not being the focal point yeah. here now, yeah. I mean, imagine him on a team with three other guys that demand the ball okay. like that. I mean, DeRozan yeah. more or less, like in many ways, fills the same role that Julius does, um, mm-hmm. except for he's doing it better this year. Much better. Obviously. Much but, better. you know, a guy that, his his office is in the mid range, you know, and that's like his bread and butter. And 
shaky, questionable three point shot, underrated. Uh, in DeRozan's case, I think underrated distributor. In Julius's case, maybe properly rated distributor at this point. But you know, it, it, kind of similar in the way that they play offense. So that would be that would be an interesting one. I, I would be intrigued to see how it would work in Chicago. But for the Knicks, I mean, yeah, I, I think that would be pretty cool. I mean, it stinks having to give up Deuce, but. Really, if you're getting Lonzo Ball back, who is as good as he is defensively and is a more realized NBA player mm-hmm. at this point in his life, I mean, I, not to say, like, do you really need Deuce? But, like, do you really need Deuce? You know, like, you'll kind of you, – you'll be able to play, you know, quickly in Lonzo and get many of the same results that you did with uh, Deuce and, and quickly, you know. So I, mm-hmm. I think that would be totally cool. Uh, so I'm totally down for that deal. But – that's all the mock trades that we had to cook up with on this uh, CP. Do you have any final thoughts on all this? And if not, do you want to just let everybody know where to find you on uh, YouTube and, and social media and all that good stuff? Yeah, man. Um, you know, no, no final thoughts, but you know, with the Knicks officially being eliminated as we record this pod again, it's been, it's been a tough year. It's been a strange year and this front office has a lot of work to do a lot of decisions to be made and, and starting tomorrow. And so we'll, we'll just have to wait and see as the world turns. Knicks edition's never a dull moment within this fan base. That's for sure. You know, that's what makes our fan base the best, man. So uh, always have fun doing these pods with you guys, man. So hopefully you guys will come on Knicks Fan TV. We've, we've been talking about doing it, but we definitely got to get you guys on a crossover. And uh, yeah, like I said, a lot to talk about this offseason. So we'll have something to talk about for sure. Well, definitely check out Knicks Fan TV again if it. If you listen to us in podcast form, go check them out on YouTube or the podcast. I mean, uh, CP puts out every show as a podcast, but absolutely one of the most entertaining products I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. It's no wonder that you've blown up as much as you have because it's it's like Francesa on steroids many yeah. nights with the callers, <laughs> uh, yeah. with the way oh, yeah. people come in talking <laughs> crazy and everything. So it's it's always a great time on Knicks Fan TV. Definitely check that out. CP, thanks so much for coming on, man. Taking so much time. Uh, for what by the time people are getting to the end of this has probably turned into a two-part episode on our feed uh but it was it was awesome and we will definitely be over to nick's fan tv sometime soon to do a little crossover action but thanks for popping on and Mm -hmm. uh enjoy what's left of this season (laughs) yeah anytime fellas take it easy